Hello, this is one of my favourite all-time images from the Hubble Space Telescope. It shows a beautiful spiral galaxy known as the Whirlpool and a small companion galaxy known simply by its catalogue number of NGC 5194. These galaxies are located in the constellation of Carnes Venetici, the hunting dogs. It's a rather obscure pattern. Uh, the galaxies are just quite near the end star in the handle of the Plough or Big Dipper. And in the spring, when the Plough or Big Dipper is virtually overhead in the late evening, this particular object and the constellation of Carnes Venetici are very high in the sky. Now, the object was first noted as a faint fuzzy patch in 1773 by a French astronomer by the name of Charles Messier. Now, Messier was a comet hunter. Comets, by their nature, are fuzzy objects. And he compiled a catalogue of over a, a hundred fuzzy objects that he didn't want to confuse with comets. And this was number 51 in his catalogue, and so it's known as M51, but better known as the Whirlpool Galaxy. At that time, in the 18th century, and even in the middle of the 19th century, telescopes would only show objects like this as fuzzy blobs, and they were known simply as nebulae, the word nebula being Latin for cloud, because they looked a bit like fuzzy clouds in the sky. But nobody knew really what they were. Were they within our own Milky Way galaxy, or were they far beyond? Our understanding of these objects received a major boost in 1845. Now, at that time, the largest telescope in the world was in the grounds of Burr Castle in County Offaly in Ireland. And the telescope was the brainchild of the great engineer, the third Earl of Ross. And this telescope, with its specular metal mirror 72 inches across, when the mirror was finely polished, could reveal objects as they'd never been seen before. And one night in the spring of 1845, the third Earl of Ross turned this great telescope, which was nicknamed the Leviathan of Parsons Town, onto the constellation of Carnes Venetici. And he looked at this object. And for the first time, he saw spiral structure. And this was the beginning of a classification of those nebulae into spiral nebulae. But still, people didn't know exactly what they were. It wouldn't be until early in the 20th century when the great American astronomer Edwin Hubble would use an even larger telescope to reveal these objects and measure their distances that we showed that they were galaxies in their own right, lying far beyond the confines of our Milky Way. We now know that this galaxy lies just over 30 million light years from the Milky Way. The Whirlpool Galaxy and its small companion have been interacting over millions of years. Computer simulations have shown that it is quite likely that this small dwarf irregular galaxy has passed several times through its larger neighbour, and in fact at the moment probably lies slightly back from the plane of the main galaxy. About 500 million years ago, this little galaxy made a pass through this larger neighbour, and the shock waves caused by that interaction between the two set up a firestorm of starbirth. The shock waves compressed the gas in the spiral arms, and all of these pink blobs that you can see along the spiral arms are stellar nurseries. Great clouds of gas and dust where new stars and probably new planets are being born right now. The Whirlpool Galaxy is a really magnificent object of a spiral galaxy with lots of star birth going on and its small companion. And in a way, the third Earl of Ross not only was the first person to see spiral structure in another galaxy, 
He was the first person to observe an interacting pair of galaxies, which is that exactly what they are. At this time of year, the Whirlpool Galaxy is almost directly overhead in the late evening. You'll need a fairly large telescope to see any structure, but with a smaller telescope you will see it as a faint, fuzzy object, and it's well worth looking out for. The Whirlpool Galaxy in Carnes Venetique.